friends welcome back to the shop today is sunday january 8th and i don't know it's a january day here i i, I honestly haven't paid much attention to the weather this morning <laughs> it was cold when i got up uh the puddle in the yard was frozen there's your weather report for the day <laughs> i think some haunted bookshop in a um uh what the heck is this it's a corona um shop pipe and i'm just getting ready for the main event which is going to be the mighty hercules uh, turns out we got a bit of a greek theme today which was unintentional and didn't realize until i was uh getting the mighty hercules here ready uh and what we're going to be smoking today excuse me a little bit of dust on the lid sitting here for quite a while. This is the uh, my 2022 blend. I have not tried this yet. Um, these are, let me go back to the Corona while I'm getting ready for this. These are the uh, not odds and ends. I've got rules about this jar. Um, so if I, if I get something that I like during the year that's not in my normal rotation, so no Haunted Bookshop, no Pegasus, no Carter Hall, those kinds of things. Otherwise, it would just be a big jar of that. Uh, has to be non-aromatic, has to not have a lot of key in it, because those things tend to completely dominate <clears throat> anything that, that I put it into for my palate. Those are the only rules. Uh, oh, and the, the last rule is it has to be the final bowl's worth of tobacco. So if I have uh, enough tobacco to fill a bowl, it goes in there. If I have a little bit extra, I add it as well. Uh, it has to be the end of the, the container, whether it be a tin or a jar or a bag, uh, and enough to at least fill a bowl. So those are the rules. And this is what I got this year. So not, not much. I did not try a lot of new stuff. I really stuck to the, uh, to the Haunted Bookshop and Pegasus this year. But I did have several tins of, of, of new things and, and a couple of old friends. And I got here the list of what is in the uh, the 2022 mix. And I do this every year, by the way. Um, I normally would do it first video of the year, but I was still uh, had some sinus problems from the the cold that I had, and I wasn't able to taste very well, so I waited until today. All right. So what is in this? So first off. Uh, a bowl's worth of my 2021 blend and I have uh, was that right I always get the years confused yes the bowl's worth of the 2021 blend so the, the end of that and then I have some Boswell's private stock cobblestone outdoor hiking Cornell and Dio Carolina red flake with Perique GLP Stonehenge flake that one probably shouldn't have gone in there because of the aromaticity but I enjoyed it. Uh, some salty dogs from 2020. Uh, some Peter Stoke be luxury bullseye flake. Uh, Cornell and Deal House Reserve blend, one of their brick and mortar specific blends, and some Cornell and Deal Kelly's coin. And that's it. So that's what we got here. And uh, it's usually interesting because it's almost always. I don't need the glasses anymore. It's almost always a very Virginia forward blend, despite the fact that I'm a burly guy, because a lot of the things I smoke that aren't Haunted Bookshop and Pegasus uh, tend to be Virginia, Virginia Preaks, just for something different. All right, so we will fill the Hercules with uh, some of this. These jars are not great for uh, getting a bowl's worth out of, so I'm going to. Four, four, four. Yeah. So what I wanted to talk about today kind of ties in with this blend. You know, this blend is something that kind of grows over the year and changes as I add things, and I can't predict what it's going to be. Well, I guess I could, but uh, I don't. Because so I just kind of randomly decide what I'm going to smoke when it's not my usuals. Um... So in a sense, it's it's composed of a series of changes. And what got me thinking about this was a conversation I had with uh, 
short conversation, but a conversation I had with my buddy uh, Phil Rivera on Friday. And you know, the essence of it was, boy, I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, uh, actually, and by the way, we we're talking about this tamper and how long ago it was that it was bought and, and a few other things. Um, and I actually pulled this out today to, to ream the, not tamper, reamer. I pulled this out today to ream the, the Hercules. This is the best reamer I've ever used uh, for maintenance reaming. This isn't like for restoration. This is for, uh, it's getting a little thick. I better trim the cake back. Uh, Phil's got some of these available now, and they are just wonderful tools. So, anyway, plug for Phil. Um, but we were talking about how long it's been since, the, you know, it's been three years since I bought that reamer and stuff. And uh, I said, you know, it's easy to look back and say, boy, those were good times. I, I, I wish things were like that now. And we, we do that. We have a tendency to, uh, sorry, I should have been better prepared with a camper here. We have a tendency to think about the good old days, uh, whether it be 20 years ago or three years ago, and wish that things were like that. Uh, but really, if that were the case, then we wouldn't be who we are now. And, and that's kind of what I've been thinking about. And, you know, this inevitability of change and the fact that we are a product of that change. And what really got me thinking this morning about this, you know, I was reflecting on that as I was reflecting on the fact that I have finally, finally finished the crop cutter. So I got some pictures that I'll show you. Uh, but that's now moving out of the shop, and I'm cleaning up from that old build and getting ready to, to take on the next project, whatever that might be, and I, I know what it is. But uh, So this is this is a big change, actually. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, but that had multiple parts, and it was kind of spread out all over my bench and the tools and everything, and it was, it was the thing that was going on down here. And now it's gone, so there's this sense of loss is sounds kind of a, like a strong word for a woodworking project, but it is, it's a, you know, it's not here anymore. Now I got to find something to fill that space. Let's take a look at the crock cutter because I'm kind of proud of the, the end result. Uh, this is uh, before putting the finish on, all the parts are complete and I was very happy with the way everything fit together. The uh, box and press that you see there on the right hand side were uh, actually made, designed, and, and built from uh, pictures that I found on the internet because they did not have the original for those. Uh, the the main uh, board that will have the blades in it, and the blades are not in that picture, uh, that was just copied from, from an existing board. And you see the walnut oil finish that I that I used there in the in the background, and I applied the finish, and... These were the results. It really did a beautiful job of bringing out the color in the cherry and some of the grain, uh, beautiful grain in this. Uh, and of course, those nice dovetail ends on the box. Uh, very happy with the way this turned out. Uh, this is, uh, I gave it three coats of the walnut oil and let it soak in between coats. And that should be a, a nice uh, protective food safe finish for, for this. And you can see the blades are now installed and we tried it out with an apple and it works beautifully. Uh, there's another view of everything assembled. Uh, you can see how that box just shuttles back and forth. Uh, the one thing I don't like about it, and this is just the original design, is that if you push that that press down and you run out of cabbage, which it's designed to cut, uh, you will run that board into the blades. And I could have tried to do something clever with that, but I had kind of run out of clever. So <laughs> it is what it is. And finally, you see the finished uh, version there. Uh, again, blades installed, the box, the press, and it's side by side with its uh, original, uh, which is uh, everything but the blades. So the only thing that survived uh, going from right to left there are the blades. Um, even the screws are different. I've got new screws for the blades. Uh, the blades and the little support blocks that hold the blades in are, are original. So, 
this raises the question, is that the same crop cutter? Uh, which seems kind of ridiculous because it's obviously not the same crop cutter. It's the same crop cutter blades, but it's not the same cutter. And there's this, this Greek legend, paradox. Uh, if, you, if you look for this on the internet, it's, uh, it, it's wrongly attributed to a lot of people. It's, it's referred to as a paradox. It's not really a paradox. It's just a legend. Uh, it's called the Ship of Theseus. And the image that I had at the beginning of the video is actually a piece of pottery with a depiction of the Ship of Theseus on it. Theseus was uh, a king of Athens, and he's the guy that slayed the Minotaur and rescued the children of Athens from, from the king of Minos and brought them home. And uh, he escaped Minos with the, the Athenians on, on a ship, and the Athenians saved that ship and preserved it, and every year they would recreate that, that voyage um, in memory of this great founding event for them. And... Over the years, the ship would, uh, you know, obviously decay, and uh, it was a wooden ship, and they would have to replace boards, and, uh, you know, every year another board would have to be replaced, and, and over time, none of the original timber remained on that ship, and the ship was entirely composed of wood. So the question was, is that ship the same ship that Theseus rescued the uh, the children's of At children of Athens on uh, interesting question because you know change is inevitable so our ob even objects are are impermeable they, they impermeable that's not the right word <laughs> even objects change over time in a way that they they are never the same thing from from, from day to day you know a solid block of rock while it seems like that would not be changing it, there's atomic decay going on in, in the, the atoms making up that rock, and it is changing over time from, from day to day. You change. The cells in your body uh, replenish themselves, um, <clears throat> with a few exceptions. You know, brain cells don't really turn over that much. There's some, some new brain cells being made, but not a lot. Um, but your skin is turning over all the time. This is the lining of your stomach. Um, you know, so are you the same from day to day? No, change is absolutely inevitable. And change, in a sense, makes us who we are. We are, you know, we have this idea that we're born and we become a person over time. We, we grow into this, this, this person. And, and somewhere around high school or college age, we're suddenly finished. And, and that's who we are. But it's not true. Uh, and we often regret change. You know, change is often not a good thing. Uh, we, we lose a loved one. We lose a friend. Um, they, they pass on. Or they, we have an argument with someone and, and, and we separate from them. Uh, we have devastating events happen in our lives. You know, uh, we, we lose a car in an accident. Our house burns down. Our business burns down. We heard about... <clears throat> from Daniel Leslie on Friday night about a friend of his whose uh, trucking business burned to the ground overnight and you know, needs needs prayer. So if you're of the praying type, send up a prayer for Daniel's friend. Um, you know, these things happen. They happen. They're inevitable. Well, I shouldn't say that the tragedies are inevitable, but some of them are. You know, we are going to lose loved ones. It's We live long enough. Friends and family members are going to pass on before us. Um, but those events, as, as hard as they are, are part of who we are. And if it weren't for those events, we wouldn't be who we are today. So it's interesting to think about that. Especially as we get older. Because we get this idea that we're static, that we're, you know, eh, I'm just going to coast until the end now. It's not true. You can't be static. It's impossible. And you might choose to decay. And that's a choice you can make. You know, you might decide, well, I'm just going to sit around and watch TV and smoke my pipe and read books and listen to music. And then one day I won't be here anymore. 
and that's fine. You know, that's an option, but you're still changing because you're decaying. Uh, you're going to run downhill until the end. Or you might choose to uh, take the other extreme. I'm going to fight it till the end. I'm going to run marathons, and I'm going to going to eat healthy, and I'm going to, uh, you know, do everything I can to, to stay as, as young and virile and healthy as I can until the, the very, very end. And, and that's fine, too, but you're still going to change. You're going you're to change yourself in doing those things. And, of course, the, the, the decay is inevitable. You are going to eventually come to your end. But we never stop changing. We never stop becoming. That's why I titled this uh, Changes Are Becoming or something like that. We never stop. We're never done. We're never done. And the new challenge is always around the corner. Ah, so that was a bit deep, and I'm sure my friend uh, Jan is is pulling his hair out because Jan's a professional philosopher, and I'm I'm one of those amateur philosophers that are uh... <laughs> actually that that's giving myself too much credit. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Jan's a good guy. I love philosophers. I I, I think that the world is better for them. Uh, Somebody's got to spend their time thinking much deeper about these things than, than you or I can. So what about the 2022 blend? It's good. If this was something I could buy in bulk, I'd be stocking up on it. There's some Perique. I'm definitely getting Perique out of it. Um, lots of sweet, sweet Virginia. Uh, very deep, sweet. And something riding on the top of it, just a little, almost floral edge. Maybe it's from that Stonehenge, but... But this is a surprise. Uh, Normally, my, my annual blend is just kind of vaporish, but this one has uh, some really interesting stuff going on in it. Hmm. Well, this is fun. So, I will probably have about a bowl of this per month. I, I often forget and, you know, have a, wind up having a couple of bowls in November, December, just to, to get to the end. Uh, where is 2022? 2020, boy, it's hard to keep these years straight. This is what's left of 2021, uh, so this will go, this is the start of the 2023 jar, and uh, yeah. I recommend you try this, it's, it's fun, and it doesn't take much effort, you're just donating a bowl of tobacco to it, but don't take the approach of just putting the odds and ends into a jar, that never works out. Um, and, you know, especially if you if you smoke the occasional aromatic or the occasional English and you're not really a hardcore aromatic or English smoker because those things just swamp everything out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I love this. So what's up? What's up next? Um, Got to get back to work on that. Uh, set of drawers that I was going to make for my sharpening supplies. That's that's my next project. Uh, might do a little bit of organization on the tool front before I, I get back to that, just because I ran into some issues when I was making the crowd cutter that I'd like to not have to run into. Uh, but we'll see. I really need to get those drawers done so that I can get that stuff stored and move on. Uh, I'm going to get back to making pipes. Because it's fun, not because I'm going to be a pipe maker. I just I just enjoy doing it and enjoy playing with the uh, the workings. This Hercules, by the way, uh, it's a Savinelli second. I think they're still making them. I'm not sure. This is one of the my favorite pipes, without question. Um, 
big bowl, but it, it smokes so nicely. It, it smokes, even though that's a, that's a big, deep bowl, it smokes very similar to a, to a pot in a lot of ways for me. And it might be because of the diameter of the bowl. But uh, yeah, I like this pipe a lot. And I had to do some work on this one. Um, I got it as new old stock. And uh, for a ridiculous price, I think I paid $12 for it. Uh, but you can see there's a mark right in there. Maybe you can see it where there was a flaw and it started to seep. Uh, sometimes you get these flaws in the briar that they're, they're really like tiny fissures or cracks that go all the way through. And uh, over time, tar from the, the smoke will get in there and, and eventually start to seep out. And you'll notice, oh, I've got a I've got pipe gunk on my hand. Where did that come from? Uh, well, it was coming from there. So what I wound up doing is uh, drilling it out and putting a uh, stainless steel tube through. And I made sure to match the stainless steel tubing inner diameter to the same diameter as the, the draft hole originally was, and it did not change the smoking quality at all. Yeah, one of my favorite pipes. And 2022 blend gets two thumbs up. And you can't try it, because you can't get it anywhere. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about it. And also the, the sad thing about it, when it's gone, it's gone. Never have it again. I suppose I could go back and try to recreate it, because I know what's in it. But it, you'd have to add it at the same time, and you, you know, because each of those components melted together for different periods of time. Uh, you can never recreate this. I think a lot of that sweetness is coming from the luxury bullseye flick. That has some very sweet Virginias in it, and it's also got some black Cavendish that kind of smooths out and accentuates that sweetness. This is, this is good. I am going to enjoy this. I'm going to probably uh, start doing a little bit of tool organization. And then start laying out the, uh, the dovetails for the, the drawer carcass. So, I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining me. I hate to say these things, but likes and comments are important because they get the word out and help other people find the channel. <clears throat> More importantly, help my subscribers know when I post a new video. Oddly enough, the more thumbs up I get, the easier it is for people to see the notifications and stuff. I don't know how YouTube works, but just do it. It takes, it takes no time at all. Uh, and in, when you're watching YouTube videos and, and, and you see... Uh, YTPC videos, hit the thumbs up button, just do it as an automatic thing for everyone. Uh, it just helps the community grow, and we, we like our community to grow. Well, with that, folks, I'm going to sign off. Have a great weekend and a fantastic week ahead, and don't forget to change. Until we speak again, I look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.